Today, I'm going to talk about the Law of Signs. And what the Law of Signs is used for, it's used to solve non right triangles. So we use our Law of Signs to solve non right triangles. For right triangles, we use SOHCAHTOA. First, I'm going to derive the law of sines, and then I'll go through a couple examples. Please make sure you got your calculators. So write an expression for H using angle A. Well, let's look at that triangle. That triangle, H, well, in terms of A, H is the opposite, and B is the hypotenuse. So the sine of angle A is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Or, if I cross multiply both sides by B, H is going to be B times the sine of angle A. Now we want to write an expression for H involving angle B. So go to the other part of the right triangle. And what H is, is H is standing for the height of the triangle, or the altitude. So angle B, the sine of angle B is H over A, because A is the hypotenuse and H is the height, or the opposite leg. Multiply both sides by A. So H in this case is going to be A times the sine of angle B. Since the height is the same in both triangles, I can set the two pieces equal. So I can set B times the sine of A equal to A times the sine of B. Now if I divide both sides by A times B, the B's cancel on the left, on the right the A's cancel, so I get the sine of angle A over side A is equal to the sine of angle B over side B. Now let's talk about where angle A is. Angle A is here. Side A is opposite of that. Angle B is here. Side B is opposite. And side C, angle C is opposite of that. So our law of signs. We use the law of signs in, again, non-right triangles. In right triangles, use SOHCAHTOA. So right triangles, SOHCAHTOA. Use the law of signs when you're given angle, angle, side. So in a triangle, if you're given an angle and a side and an angle, you can use um, the law of signs if you're given angle, angle, side. So if I'm given two angles in the non-included side, and then I know this is a bad word, and that's not a way to prove triangles congruent, this is what we call the ambiguous case. We're going to get to that when you get to pre-calculus. We're not going to really deal with that case. We're just going to deal with the other two cases. And again, our law of signs is the sine of angle A over the side opposite of that angle. The sine of angle B over the side opposite of B. The sine of angle C over the side opposite of C. And yes, I expect you to remember that formula. So our first example. Use the law of sines to solve the triangle. When I mean solve, that means find all the missing angles and sides. So I'm looking for angle C, side C, side B. Well, angle C is the easiest one to find. I'm given two angles. 
So angle C is 180 minus 43 minus 62. So angle C is going to be equal to 75. Now it might be helpful if you put that in the triangle. Now you can choose which side to find next, C or B. I go with next letter of the alphabet, so let's go with B. So B, side B, the sine of angle A over side A is equal to the sine of angle B over side B. Now angle A, start filling into your proportion, is 43. The side opposite of angle A is 24. The sine of angle B is 62. I'm looking for side B. If I cross multiply, I get 24 times the sine of 62 equals B times the sine of 43. If you're solving for B, So I'm going to flip real quick to our calculator. I'm going to check one thing, make sure I'm in degree mode. I am. Now, what I was trying to find is I was trying to find angle or side B. So the equation that I had set up is side B was equal to 24 times the sine of 62 over the sine of 43. You can type that in your calculator just as you see it. So 24 times the sine of 62. Close the parenthesis because 62 is the only thing you want in the angle and that tells the calculator that's all I want in the angle because sine of 43, whatever that value is, needs to be in the denominator. Close your parenthesis, press enter. 31.07. And let's run to two decimal places. So let's put that in our piece here. So 31.07. Zero seven. Now to find angle, uh, that was um, side B. Make sure you label correctly. Side B was 31.07. Now side C. Start with what you were given. So sine of A over side A is equal to the sine of so angle C over side C. So I knew the sine of 43 over... 24 was equal to the sine of 75 because I found that angle over C. Cross multiply again. So C times the sine of 43 equals 24 times the sine of 75. Divide by the sine of 43 because that cancels that out. I meant to highlight that over here. Cancels that out. So we have divided by the sine of 43, so C is going to equal 24 times the sine of 75 divided by the sine of 43. Now notice, that's exactly how I should type that into my calculator. Notice the difference from this one and that one. The only thing that has changed is the 62 and the 75. So let's look at how we can work efficiently. To get C, we had 24 times the sine of 75 divided by the sine of 43. If you pull up the previous entry, so second equal sign pulls up the previous entry, all you have to do is arrow up and make the 62 a 75. That's the only thing that's changed. So now I press enter and I get 33.99.
So this is 33.99. Next, we're given angle, angle, and the non-included side. So again, we need to solve the triangle. We need to find angle Y. We need to find side X, Z, and Z, Y. Again, to find angle Y, that's 180 minus 41 minus 34. So angle Y is going to be 105. Now to find ZY to find this side. Sine of angle X over ZY is equal to the sine of 34 over 5.8. You have to use this 34 and the 5.8 because that's the angle on the side that you know. Now cross multiply. Um, well, we know the sine of x, x, angle x is 41. So cross multiply 5.8 times the sine of 41 is equal to the sine zy times sine 34. Now divide by the sine of 34. So zy is going to be 5.8 times the sine of 41 divided by, make sure you put that all in parentheses, sine of 34. Now what you want to do is type that in your calculator. I'm not going to show you guys how to type that in your calculator. ZY ends up being 6.8. To find the other side, to find XZ. Remember, you can't use Pythagorean theorem because this isn't a right triangle. So you need to set up the law of sines again. Sine of 34 over 5.8 equals, well, y was 105. Sine of 105 over xz, cross multiply. Divide by the sine of 34. Those cancel, so you type that in your calculator. You get xz to be 10.02. There are your lesson questions for the day. Please make sure those are submitted on time.